How does shred work? In its simplest form, you spend money first on eligible activities. That could be spending money in terms of labor, contractors, material, purchasing equipment, etc., on eligible work. You claim those benefits on your tax return. Generally, that's filed with your taxes each year, and it's submitted with a technical and a financial report to the government. The Canada Revenue Agency will validate your claim to make sure that you meet all of the eligibility criteria. And if all goes well, generally you receive a cash refund or a tax credit if you're a private corporation within four to eight months. So I hope that you can see this is a relatively straightforward program, not overly complicated. So let's define SRNED. It's a fairly long definition. It's a systematic investigation or a search that's carried out in the field of science or technology, and it's done by means of experimentation or analysis. Now this is a fairly lengthy definition. What we're going to get into in the next couple of slides is what does that really mean, and how can the work that you do qualify to be able to meet that definition. There are four major categories of SRNED. SRNED stands for Scientific Research and Experimental Development, so there are actually two halves of the program. The scientific research aspect of this program are things like pure research and applied research, generally things that are done in academic institutions and universities where you're doing research into activities that may not necessarily have a practical application. Where most of the work that you do is going to fall into this category here, experimental development, where you're testing things, running experiments, trying out new solutions to IT and computer science problems. This is where you're going to fall into that category. The last category is technical support work. And this encompasses various aspects like design, testing, and software programming, which in and of themselves are not eligible activities. But if they're done to support this definition of shred, you can claim some of the time done in that. Okay, and we'll get to uh, how that works in a few moments. So experimental development. This is the category that most of the work that you do is going to fall into. It's defined as work taken to achieve technological advancement. And that's done to be able to create new or improve existing products, processes, or materials. And that includes software as well. So some examples. You may develop a new product, a new streaming algorithm that allows you to support real-time video. Or improve an existing product. You may have developed algorithms to facilitate faster communication between wireless devices. Or improve image compression ratios. You may have developed a new tool set for your development team that allows them to create software applications at a much faster rate. So all types of different applications that could apply for this program. Now, how can we tell whether these types of projects are eligible? Well, there are three major criteria that need to be met to qualify for this program. And all three of these criteria need to be met. It's like a three-legged stool. There's technological uncertainty, technological content, and technological advancement. We'll talk a little bit about each of these three in the next several slides. Technological uncertainty. Now, there's a lot of text on these several slides, so I'm going to try and condense this and summarize this. In a nutshell, technical uncertainty means you have a technical problem that you don't know how you're going to solve. So either you don't know that a solution exists for your problem, or if you think a solution exists, there may be several alternatives of solving that problem. And you're not sure which solution is going to work or which solution is going to work best. Another example is what we call system uncertainty. You may be working with software modules that are known to work well independently and separately. But when you try to integrate these items into a single system, there may be unexpected side effects that you can't foresee that represent some type of uncertainty. How is this all going to work together in a unified system? So there are many different forms of technical uncertainty. But as I said, in its simplest form, you've got a technical problem, and you're not sure how you're going to solve this. And this is above and beyond routine computer programming. This is something where you generally are not sure, uh, as a professional industry, how you're going to solve that problem. So some examples, which may be more helpful to explain this. You may be trying to integrate hardware and software that may not have been designed to work together and trying to get them to work to re represent some significant uncertainty. How are you going to do that? Or you may have software programs, again, that weren't designed to work together that you're trying to integrate successfully. Interfacing with legacy systems is always a difficult challenge. You may have a particular application 
that you're needing to try to write that works fine on modern hardware, but trying to get that to work on a legacy system that has half of the computing power or half of the processing speed is significantly more difficult. You may use components or modules in unique or previously undocumented fashions that are relatively unique and new. And lastly, you may have exposure to different constraints. It could be environmental or requirement-based constraints. So as an example, in the environment, you may have a constraint in terms of the computing architecture that you need to develop on. Or you may have specific computing power or resource constraints that you need to operate with that make it technically challenging to achieve the objectives you want to do. In terms of requirements, you may have some specific functionality requirements that you need to meet that are technically complex. Response time, throughput, any of these types of challenges can significantly appear if you have a software program that you're trying to scale, for example, from a small number of users to a large number of users. You may definitely run into these types of problems. Response time, throughput, stability issues, all can represent technical uncertainties. How are you going to overcome these problems successfully? Criteria number two is technical content. And what this represents is an iterative and systematic experimental approach to solving those problems that you've identified. So you have a technical problem, and you're going to apply an experimental approach to solve it. Now, you're going to say software in and of itself is obviously iterative in nature. That's as you develop code, you go through design, redesign, testing, debugging. And that's really not what this means when we talk about the iterative experimental approach. It requires more. You're doing iterations to help solve that technical uncertainty. But that's the key element of this. So there's actual true experimentation that's done, where you don't know the outcome of that tester. Right? Within standard coding, you may have a good idea of the outcome. It's, it's known already. It's just a matter of doing the coding. But where you don't know the outcome, that's the secret for identifying this. Then you can demonstrate this, technical content, the experimentation, by documenting what type of unexpected technical obstacles arose while you were doing your coding. What challenges came about? If you can document that, it's very helpful. Can you identify different alternatives that you may use to explore the solutions? You may have three different techniques to solve that technical problem. Make a note of those. Document them. Write them down. And lastly, document the progress that you make in solving that technical challenge. What were the results of those experiments and those alternatives that you explored? Did it pass? Did it fail? Why didn't it work? So keeping records of this, as you'll soon see in this presentation, is a very important part of submitting a successful SRMD claim.